Good evening, hello and welcome to the news today, your destination for the news, the news makers, the talking points, news with perspective, every weeknight here on India Today TV. Let's start a brand new week. But our top story tonight, the news that's breaking at the moment, the International Monetary Fund has upgraded India's growth index. All this coming at a time when Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in Davos. He's on his way to Davos in Switzerland where the World Economic Forum is being held. Mr. Modi arrived in Zurich a short while ago. And remember, he will address the opening session at the plenary of the World Economic Forum tomorrow. It's after 20 years that an Indian Prime Minister is going to Davos. What's at stake for Narendra Modi? It's our top story tonight. It's the first in two decades that an Indian Prime Minister will be at the World Economic Forum in Davos. And this time, India and Narendra Modi mean business. Prime Minister Modi will address the World Economic Forum opening session with the theme of creating a shared future in a fractured world. In 2017, Chinese President Xi Jinping delivered the main address. And this time, it will be Narendra Modi. India is only behind China in economic might in Asia and at Davos it will be for the world to see. Six union ministers and two chief ministers are also accompanying the Prime Minister. The manner in which he has put on fast track a series of economic reforms, some of them absolutely revolutionary, some of them unorthodox. The manner in which Prime Minister Modi is inspiring a business instinct and an instinct to move forward in, in, in people and in representatives coming from all parts of the globe. With 70 heads of state, 2,000 CEOs including 100 from India and chiefs of the WTO, IMF, World Bank and the United Nations, India will get the place of pride at the World Economic Forum. And all eyes now are on the Prime Minister's opening address on Tuesday. And I see India as a major partner for the World Economic Forum moving forward in this field. The Prime Minister will also address about 20 Indian CEOs and 40 from around the world. Narendra Modi will hard sell India as an open economy which is ready for investments from across the world and also as a major engine to drive the global economic growth. We are delighted that PM is coming. I, I don't know him personally all that well, but we all know about him in India. And I think he's an outstanding speaker. I'm told he'll speak in Hindi as he speaks everywhere, including the United Nations. Other star attractions at Davos include US President Donald Trump, French President Emmanuel Macron, British Prime Minister Theresa May, and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. But TPP wasn't the right way, so we'll go back to that. Trump will deliver the keynote address at the end. 21% of the participants will be women, a higher proportion than at any previous World Economic Forum meet. Bureau Report, India Today. And let's turn to the breaking news that's coming in at the moment. Ahead of the Prime Minister's inaugural address at the World Economic Forum in Davos, the International Monetary Fund has given a thumbs up to India's economy. The IMF said India is the fastest growing large economy. The global body also has upgraded its growth forecast for India from 6.7% to 7.4% in 2018 and 7.8% in 2019. So clearly the Prime Minister getting a big boost ahead of that visit that he is undertaking at the moment to Davos. Remember the Prime Minister there becoming the first Prime Minister in 20 years to go to Davos and will address the plenary tomorrow. Our managing editor Rahul Kawal is on ground zero in Davos. Rahul, this news now coming in of a boost to the economy will obviously give the Prime Minister another opportunity to hard sell India as an investment destination because for all these numbers, the fact is that investors are not coming in in the kind of large numbers for the projects that India would like. Yes. The Sensex is booming, but they aren't coming to actually invest in manufacturing. Is that going to be the goal of the Prime Minister to hard sell India come tomorrow? Uh, Rajdeep, hi. Uh, there's huge chaos here in Davos. Let me try and explain some of that to you. It's snowing 
like crazy. It's snowing in the way uh, the Davos old timers tell us it hasn't snowed in years now. And it's been snowing non-stop for the last three days. It's been snowing non-stop for the last three days. There are huge, huge, huge traffic jams. You don't see them just right behind me. That's because most roads have now been blocked off. That's how bad the traffic situation is. There's slush. Uh, I met the WEF president this morning and he said that some member of his team fell and broke his leg coming into work this morning. Uh, it's extremely complicated. This is a small uh, Swiss skiing village, the whole world trying to come in here. I want to show you. I want to ask uh, Subodh to walk across and show you the Prime Minister's uh, hoarding right here. There's a lot of uh, Make in India, India means business uh, hoardings that have been put up Rajdeep, in different parts of Davos and that really is the Prime Minister's big pitch here. There he is, Make in India, India means business. He's showing how India has gone up 42 rankings in the World Bank ease of doing business report just in the last three years. Now you have a point, your point really is about whether investment is coming in in quite the same speed as we'd expect here in Davos at this time, India is the big story. Remember Rajdeep, you've got 70 heads of state of different countries coming into Davos this year. This is the most powerful Davos uh, organizers tell us that they've organized so far and you've got India inaugurating Davos this year. You've got the Indian Prime Minister, the first reception that's ordinarily hosted by the World Economic Forum is being hosted by India this evening and tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock is when the Prime Minister will be speaking at the inaugural plenary where he will talk about India's role in helping build a shared future in a fractured world. Uh, there isn't that much pessimism uh, here. Instead, there's a lot of optimism. There's a lot of talk about the India story and about how India is rapidly emerging as an economic power for the world to reckon with. Right. Raul, watching you, I'm very happy to be in the warmth of the studio because I can see that it's getting colder by the moment. It's snowing heavily and we'll uh, join you again at 10 p.m. to find out more about what exactly is Prime Minister Modi's agenda there in Davos. Raul Kawal joining us from the bitter cold and the snows of Davos where the Prime Minister has some warmth with those IMF numbers. Okay, let's turn straight from Davos back to the big story here in India, where a three-judge bench of the Supreme Court today heard Justice Bridge Gopal Harkishan Loya, the controversial Loya death case today. In its observation, the Supreme Court restrained all the high courts from listening to the case. But the case has become a political hot potato, with the judges warning the lawyers not to cast aspersions on BJP President Amit Shah, Amit claims that Judge Loya was murdered. Here is our top story from India. Four senior most judges of the Supreme Court raising the banner of revolt over a signing of the Judge Loya death case. Now a three-judge bench of the Apex Court led by the Chief Justice of India began a formal hearing in the case that has split the judiciary. And in a big observation, the Supreme Court said that all documents show that Judge Loya's death was natural. It also cautioned petitioners against casting aspersions on BJP President Amit Shah. The petitioner's lawyer, Dushan Dave, objected to the way the matter was handled by the Maharashtra government and demanded a probe. The top court on its part restrained all high courts from hearing any Loya death plea and transferred two cases to itself. The three-judge bench even went on to say that all documents must be heard in an objective manner since serious allegations have been made out. My documents will come before the court, other petitioner's documents will come before the court and let the court, honourable court, decide what happened and let the people of our country know the truth. The judges mysteriously died, there are different versions. The truth, whether it was a natural death, whether it was an unnatural death. The cloud will have to be cleared. Ultimately, is it a, the natural death or there is somebody's hand in that, in his death, is a question to be probed. I think the, the, the ju judicature of the highest order in this country, namely Supreme Court, will have to clear these down. But it was the big face-off between the petitioner's lawyer Dushan Dave and Harish Salve that grabbed everyone's attention. The petitioner's lawyer Dave raised objections to Maharashtra government lawyer Harish Salve, citing his previous stint as Amit Shah's lawyer prompting derisive remarks from Salve. 
Interesting developments in the Supreme Court today with the Apex Court saying that all the documents in the case of Judge Loya should be dealt with in an objective manner. Justice Chandrachur also pointing out that we all are the keepers of our own conscience and if there is a foul play which is suspected in the death of a judge who was hearing an important matter, then all the counsels in this case, especially Mr. Dushan Dave Indra Jaising who have intervened in the matter, must actually assist the court in fairness in the coming days. It would be worth watching if there there is any document that can further point to the fact on the allegations of whether at all there was a foul play in the death of Judge Loya. With camera person Pratap, this is Anusha Soni for India Today. Now before we turn to our face off tonight, I want to raise certain questions to improve possibly our explanation of the Loya case. There may be many out, out of you out there who have heard contrary version. Now there are several unanswered questions and I will give the responses that the government, the police are giving in Nagpur. Was Judge Loya in 2014, November, December forced by his fellow judges in Bombay to attend the wedding? Well, this is the response according to a judge who shared a room who we spoke to. Loya wasn't persuaded to attend the wedding. He came on his own volition. The second question that we asked one of the judges who had accompanied Judge Loya, and this is part of the testimonies in the court, was Loya taken to the hospital in an auto? Well, this is what the judge said. Loya was taken to hospital in a car, says one of the judges who was with Judge Loya. The third question, why were there blood stains on Loya's clothes? This is the answer that was given to us by a local doctor in Nagpur. Blood may have oozed out during the journey to Latur in Maharashtra, which is, remember, the hometown where his body was taken, says Dr. Pinak Dhande at the Dhande Hospital, where Loya's was, body was brought. Was Loya's body not properly clothed? This is what just, uh, Dr. Dhande said. After post-mortem, bodies are usually wrapped in cloth. Attendant put body clothes on Loya's body despite rigor mortis is what Dr. Dhande is claiming of the hospital. Why was no ECG done on Mr. Loya, uh, Judge Loya at the first hospital? ECG done, Loya needed specialized cardiac care is what Dr. Dhande has told us. Why was ECG dated November 30th when Loya was admitted on December 1st? Now, this is an interesting answer. Dr. Dande says ECG machine had a calibration problem, which is why the dates are mixed. The next question, was the judge's body accompanied by only an ambulance driver from Nagpur to Latur? This is what we were told. Two judges, one traffic cop followed ambulance in another vehicle, says Shivaji Bodke, the Joint Commissioner of Police Nagpur. Why was the body handed over to a Dr. Prashant Rathi, not to the family? And this is the answer we were given. Collected body after request from my uncle, Loya's cousin, says Dr. Prashant Rathi. Why did it take 45 minutes for Loya to be brought to the Dande hospital from the Raj Bhavan where he was? Well, we informed the registrar Rupesh Rathi and he came in his car, was taken to the hospital immediately once the car reached, says the judge who shared a room with Loya. And my final question, why did Loya's family receive calls at 5 a.m. when Loya was declared dead at 6.15 a.m.? It was a natural death, so time of autopsy mentioned and not time of death, claimed a forensic expert in Nagpur that we spoke to. All of these raise certain questions then tonight. Should the Chief Justice in particular recuse himself from the Loya case? Why has the Maharashtra government been unwilling to investigate the case till now? Is it fair to cast aspersions on Amit Shah? Remember, Loya was looking at the Sorabuddin case where Amit Shah at the time was a prime accused. Is the Loya case now caught in a political tug of war? Is the anti-BJP opposition engaging in a fishing expedition? Or is the Loya case serious enough for an independent inquiry? Straight face off today, Gaurav Bhatia, advocate and spokesperson of the BJP and Mohammed Khan, advocate and spokesperson of the Congress. And I want to come to you Mr. Bhatia first because today two things were said by the judge. He said don't cast aspersions, by at least two of the judges, don't cast aspersions on Amit Shah. But also one of the judges, Judge Chandrachud said this is a serious matter. I want to understand, has the BJP already decided that there is a clean chit to be given, there was no foul play and therefore this matter should immediately be dismissed by the judges. 
Rajdeep, see, uh, speaking as a lawyer, I would like to make it very clear that there were certain very important remarks made by the Honorable Supreme Court judges. And uh, Mr. Dushandave, uh, who was representing the petitioner, Mr. Tehseen Poonawala, who has close connection with the Congress, and we all know that, the Honorable Supreme Court judges categorically said that as of today, mm -hmm. uh, there can't be any dispute that uh, Judge Loya died a natural death. And to that, even Mr. Dushan Dave agreed. And second, the Supreme Court also uh, reprimanded the lawyers that please don't cast aspersions on an individual without proving the charge. So he was talking about Mr. Amit Shah. And what led to this remark is even more serious. Because while arguing, you are not supposed to make uh, personal allegations. But the lawyer had said that the entire system is trying to protect one man. And then he named Amit Shah twice. So what we ask is that if you have come to the Supreme Court, don't the petitioners have faith in the judiciary? It is the Supreme Court ultimately that mm -hmm. would decide. And whether it's a natural death or whether it requires a probe. But it seems... There is a larger political conspiracy going by the petitioner, Mr. Tehseen Poonawala, closely associated to the Congress. Mr. Mr. Rahul Gandhi doing a press conference and raising the issue of Judge Loya and referring to the letters of the four judges when the judge's letter never made a mention categorically about Judge Loya's death. And third, then Abhishek Manu Singhvi also coming out and making it political. I think the wisdom would be to wait for the Supreme Court to adjudicate. And I think they are the most competent people who will decide whether a probe should be ordered or not. Can I, can I just make can I two fact now? checks? Two fact yeah. checks. A, Mr. Tehseen Punawala is not an official member of the Congress. B. Dushyan Dave has denied that he's a I never said so. Dushyan well, Dave has denied. Mr. Dave has denied. Now, just a minute, Mr. Bhatia. Mr. Dave has mm -hmm. denied that he is uh, uh, appearing for Mr. Punawala. In fact, he is appearing for the Bombay Lawyers Association, yep. which had gone no, with no, the petition. Let me, let me clarify. That is why these are yes. He has Let denied. Me clarify then, uh, Rajdi, for your better understanding if Mr. also. Has done, can I jump in? Punawala is a petitioner for whom a different uh, senior advocate is appearing. Yes. But nobody can deny the proximity that the petitioner has with the Congress. No, and no, you second, Mr. Duchan Dave is appearing in the second PIL file. Whenever Mr. So Bhatia I has never done, I connected the two, but I am giving you two separate facts okay. which are relevant for this. Okay. The fact is. Is this a fishing expedition that the Congress has launched? Mm -hmm. At the moment, the judges say, based on the four testimonies of the judges that are there before, mm -hmm. uh, before them, who accompanied Judge Loya, mm -hmm. they say they found no evidence of any foul play, Absolutely. unnatural death, that, 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 of an unnatural death, though I don't know how judges suddenly become doctors. Exactly. The question, though, is, is the Congress launched a fishing expedition to somewhere ensnare Amit Shah? And the judges today said very clearly, you cannot cast aspersions on Amit Shah. Just because Amit Shah was an accused in a case being heard by Judge Loya doesn't mean that Judge Loya necessarily was murdered, as is being implied by a section of your party. Right. Now... If you will allow me the time to answer these questions, yes. let's collect them one by one. First of all, there is no net that the Congress has thrown around Mr. Amit Shah to ensnare him. Mr. Amit Shah is caught in a web of his own making. The fact is that for whatever reason, all of these facts have come to light. And colleagues of yours have reported them in a truthful and honest manner. That is why this entire debate is taking place. Now, I'm, very, uh, I'm a little upset that you denied me the opportunity to correct Mr. Bhatia as he incorrectly went about spouting facts. Aside from the fact that Mr. Dushan Dave openly said that he would not appear for Tehseen Poonawala and said other things about the same, I would also like to educate Mr. Bhartia that when he says that they, when Justice Chandrachur said that don't make remarks about any individual, he was referring to Mr. Salve. So if you had been present in court, you would have seen there was a tiff that took place between Mr. No, Dave no, and Mr. Salve. Incorrect. And during that, time, during that time, Justice Chandrachur intervened. And let me tell you the full text of what he said. He said, do not make remarks against any individual, his own conscience will guide him. He was talking about Mr. Salve. Please don't try and point these things out of context. Rajdeep, Mr. Bhatia, I, I did not... No, 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 one, minute, one, minute, one, one minute, one minute. One minute, just for our audience, just a minute. One, and I want to, because this is a complicated case, to explain to yeah. our audience, Mr. Dave tried to suggest that Hari Salve had appeared yeah. in another case for Amit exactly. Shah and was now appearing for the Maharashtra government and therefore there was a conflict of interest. That is when also the judges intervened yeah. and Mr. Salve also spared, please yeah. do not sermonize or cast any aspersions on yeah. me and the judges seemed to back that. But they also seemed to suggest yeah. 
implicitly don't go public and claim Amit Shah in some way is involved. They didn't name the BJP president, but there was also that implication that the Congress somewhere okay. is claiming that Amit Shah is engaged in a cover-up. Where even, is the evidence? Do you have a single the, jot of evidence yes, that Amit Shah himself is involved a, in the cover-up? Very good question. Now, you're saying that there was some implication that don't talk about Amit Shah, but in the same court hearing, two wonderful things happened. Justice Chandra Chul turned to the uh, lawyers and said, look, we will not go on media reports. Indian Express, Caravan, we are not going to look at them. Let's get all the facts here. Let's examine them from scratch and that is what we need our judges to do. I think it was a stellar performance. They said we will bring everything before us and we will examine it independently. Number two, and here Mr. Bhatia uh, of 2018, you should ask what Mr. Mr. Salve, what he said in court on behalf of the government of Maharashtra. He said there should be a gag order to which Mr. Indra Jai Singh, who argued beautifully on your channel a week ago on the same issue, said you did not ban Padmavati, you upheld the right of free speech there, why would you take steps in this case? To which Justice Deepak Mishra no, said, of course we are not going to do that, and he said that you shouldn't say something like because that. Because the fear to the is... Credit, they did not gag the, they no, did the, not gag the press. The fear of the gag order, because there are lawyers going outside and already making accusations, accusations are being made that Deepak Mishra, the Chief Justice, himself should not be appearing in the Loya case. First there was the accusation, which bench has he handed over the case to and somewhere Gaurav Bhatia and all this is the fear that this case is now getting caught in a political and legal web. Do you believe that the Chief Justice should be supervising a case? The four dissenting judges led by Chelameshwar are not involved on yeah. the bench but should the Chief Justice therefore be involved in a case like this? Should he also recuse himself? There are many questions that need to be answered and a lot of facts that my young friend Mohammed Khan has placed before the viewers which are incorrect. Please, I request oh, I you, Radeep, not to please interrupt. I've noted them correct, down then. and I'm responding to them one by one. Yes. Yeah, please. First, first of all, uh, uh, when you say Honorable Chief Justice of India should recuse himself, mm -hmm. let me Being tell you that Honorable Chief Justice of India has the administrative powers and he has to allocate cases as per Prakash Chand case and there are very many judicial precedents to that effect Mr. Bhatia, also. We never that when issue. my friend Mohammed Khan says that uh, Mr. Hari Salve had asked for a gag order, that is also incorrect. In my fact, God. Indra Jai Singh had to apologize to the court for, you know, casting his persons at the bench. Most importantly, you are saying that judges don't become doctors. Let me tell you when can a probe be ordered. I am reading from a Supreme Court judgment which says that obviously direction for investigation can be given only if an offence is prima facie you know, found Mr. to Sarvisa, have been I committed. One by one, please. One by one, please. No, no, Mr. Khan. Please ask him to be quiet. No, Mr. Khan. Ask him to be no, quiet. Khan. One by one. On this channel, quiet. I will not have crosstalk. I don't think Mohammed Khan was present in the court, but I was present in the court. And I take it very seriously when a panelist comes and he tries to throw wrong facts. No, no, please don't no, make it no, worse. No, no, no. Since he is accusing me, you must let me answer. I will let you answer. Don't Mr. Bhatia, I will let you, you answer not now. It I am trying to give a serious debate, sir. This is not a court fight. Let him answer, then you can respond. I will wait for him to conclude. Okay. Yeah. So you are saying there is no evidence of a prima now, facie case. Okay, you are saying there is no now, evidence of a prima facie case. No, no, Rajdeep, yes. allow me to complete my point. Please, yes, please. allow me to complete my point. Please, please do. So the, the prayer, Rajdeep, is that there should be a judicial probe. Yes. And the bench very categorically said that we will adjudicate the matter on merit as of today. No, no. Yeah, it can't be said that uh, there was any mysterious yeah. circumstance yeah. behind the death of Justice Loya. Now, this is what the court will decide. Are the lawyers above the Supreme Court? Is the Congress above the Supreme Court? Okay. Why yeah, can't they know. wait for the verdict? There is a reason. They want to politicize the issue and target Mr. Amit Shah, who has been discharged by a court and then the Supreme sir, Court has sir, also stamped this Sir, sir, sir now Gaurav, you allow me, I'll just... Gaurav, you've had your time. No, Mr. Bhatia, you've had your time. Now let Mr. Yeah. Mohammed Khan respond. The, okay. uh, the, uh, the basic I'd like point, to place this order later. Yes, the basic <laughs> point which is being made is unless you have a prima facie case, a judicial probe cannot be ordered. Till that judicial probe is ordered, if the court finds merits, Absolutely. a political party and indeed lawyers should be willing to have the forbearance uh -huh. to allow the judges to hear the mat the evidence at hand. Well, though I think you articulated it beautifully, I don't think that is anywhere close to what he was saying. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, you may not take me at my word.
But let me report, read to you a report of today what happened in court. Just a line. On the request by Mr. Salve for an order to the effect that the documents pertaining to the matter be not communicated beyond the concerned counsels, a war of words broke out between them. And this, as Mr. Salve said, pointed Mr. out, Mr. Salve never asked for a Now listen to me, Mr. Bhatia, do me the same court. courtesy I, I did you. Present. Mr. Bhatia, you know, I missed... Yeah, yes, please. On, I, on, you know, this is not one of those channels, at least not on this show where I allow this to, to memel. Everyone yeah. will get equal chance. Go ahead, Mr. Khan. Yeah, Mr. Bhatia, I often miss the Mr. Gaurav Bhatia of early 2017, I wonder what he would have to say to Mr. Gaurav Bhatia of today. Our position, Mr. Bhatia, has not changed. It does not vary depending on where we sit. Now, today, I think the judges did a beautiful job. This bench has taken the facts. It has gone deeper into the matter. It has said there needs to be a proper inquiry. Do you deny that, Mr. Bhatia, if you claim to be present there? Secondly, if there is nothing to hide, and that is all we are saying, if all of these facts have suddenly come to right, then shouldn't they be investigated? And that is a question neither you nor I can answer. That is what the court is there for. And we now trust in I the respond? infinite wisdom of this court, Mr. Bhatia, no matter how much you try and subjugate the issue. Okay. Now, you know, the, the point is, let me make it clear, at no uh, stage did the judges say that there must be an no, inquiry. No, they said, allow, they will, one minute, sir, they, yeah. just a minute, sir, they will examine the facts and then decide. But I want to play something, Gaurav Bhatia, that is relevant, because to me, this is something that is being lost. But Remember, you just a minute, sir. Just a minute, I will let you counter. Just listen to this and I want you to answer uh, this question. This is the sister and the father mm -hmm. of Judge Loya, and they have made a very serious allegation. Just listen in to this allegation. Gaurav Bhatia, I want you to respond. Listen in first. Chief Justice, Civil Press Gaurav Bhatia, to my mind, what this sister is saying is the most serious allegation. Yeah. She says the Chief Justice, no less of the Mumbai High Court, was offering her brother 100 crores to settle the matter by the 30th of December 2014. Is this not serious enough for a full investigation? Forget everything else. Forget now, the fact that I, whether he died of a heart attack or not. She is yes, claiming please, now, allow me and like this me, not be investigated. Why did the Maharashtra you? government, the BJP rules stay silent on it? The viewers. Please, please allow me to place all the material. <laughs> when Mr. Amit Shah was discharged, I am reading from the court order which has been upheld by the High Court and the Supreme Court. And it says, I conclude that there is no sufficient ground against How is it a Mr. Mr. Amit Shah. Just I minute, also Mr. find merit in the contention of the applicant that accused is apparently shown to be involved in this case by the CBI for some political reasons. For political reasons. We all know CBI was a cage parrot under the UPA. Sir, I, for I told you what the reasons. sister is now, saying. Now, second, you are speaking about sister. Yes, I'm coming to that. Please be patient, Rajdeep. Now, uh, I would like to remind you of what Anuj Loya, son of Judge Loya, had said. Mm -hmm. He said three things that we believe that Judge Loya, my father, had died of a natural death. Second, there is nothing mysterious about his death. And third, please don't politicize the issue. And he was talking about Congress and other political parties right. who are trying to politicize the entire issue. So the now, same, most the, no, no, sir, I would again Sir, you reiterate. made your point. You made your point. I the same read. Anuj Loya yes, in February no, no, no. 2015 had put out a letter Nadi, what saying is if anything Raj happens to my, my family, point? Judge Mohit Shah will be responsible. Yeah. Let me be very clear. My question to you is, do you believe that a statement made by the judge's sister is sufficient to at least order an inquiry? Yes or no, sir? Mr. Bhatia. Yeah, my... My reply to you is very categorical that please don't try to sit over the judgment of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is seized with the matter. It's sub -judice. And therefore, as an officer of the court also, I urge you, and the Supreme Court will take into account all the facts, the record that has been asked for, and then will okay, decide and whether to order a probe or not. But right. what Mr. is the rush Bhatia, for the Congress or any yes. other okay. media house also? Okay. I, I take your point. Item. 
I take your point. I think the question being raised, the question being raised is that at the moment what is being conducted and uh -huh. dare I say this accusation could be made against what is happening at the moment also on this channel is that we are conducting a parallel inquiry even as the case is being heard by the Supreme Court. Does the Congress party have no faith in Justice Deepak Mishra and the Supreme Court? Absolutely. I don't know why Mr. Bhatia is held. No, no, do you have Supreme it or not? Of course we have faith in Mr. Deepak Mishra. We have the utmost faith in, faith in uh, Justice Deepak Mishra and we believe he will take this case to its logical conclusion. I don't know why um, the BJP representative is being so defensive. Sir, if you are so convinced of your innocence, if you are convinced there is no foul play, then these three judges of excellent caliber, Justice Khan Vilkar, Justice Chandrachur and Justice Mishra, will arrive at a decision that is fair for the sake of our judiciary and for the sake of the memory of a judge who served his country well. Don't you think this is required? Also, Mr. Bhatia, again, I know you have a tenuous relationship with facts, but the CBI, one of the main grounds of our contention is the CBI did not file an appeal against Mr. Amit Shah's acquittal. I don't know what that appeal would have merited, but the fact that they didn't condemns you and condemns the party that you speak on behalf of today. Secondly, there are so many facts. The bribe, the way he was brought to the hospital, the machine, because everything seems to have gone against the doctors at that time. And suddenly, after three Can years, all of these facts Gandhi. are coming to light. You quote Anuj Loya's letter today. Then, as Mr. Sardesai rightly pointed out, this is the same Anuj Loya who had earlier expressed concern for his own life. So, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. Okay. I think it is Let's best leave it there. that we Let's come leave to a it there. I've given both of you equal time. I've given both of you equal time, but I'm going to give you, 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 you 15 seconds. Uh, uh, no, no, Rajiv, uh, just Mr. One, Gaurav Bhatia, because a serious charge is being made, the Congress is claiming because Amit Shah's yes. discharge was not appealed, therefore yeah, they are bringing in Amit Shah into this case. A quick response and then we'll end the debate there. You know, first of all, it is incorrect to say that it wasn't appealed because as I told you that Supreme Court had upheld the decision of discharge of Mr. Amit Shah. Second, as a lawyer, I did not uh, go into the merits because I respect the Supreme Court. But one thing is there that four judicial officers have given their statement to say that they had accompanied Judge Loya to the hospital right. and these statements hold a lot of credence in the eyes of law. Let and we should leave it to the Supreme Court rather than politicizing the sister. The okay, we should leave it to the Supreme Court, you're saying, rather than to political parties to prejudge the verdict. Face off, Mohammed Khan, Gaurav Bhatia, appreciate your joining us. So much better to have two voices than five screaming at you. At least my blood pressure remains under control. But my take, the Judge Loya case has got tangled in an acrimonious political tug of war. While there is no recorded evidence to suggest any foul play, there is enough circumstantial evidence to warrant at least an independent inquiry. In particular, the allegation made by a family member that a senior judicial officer offered 100 crores to Judge Loya to settle the Sorabuddin case is serious enough to be at least investigated. In the meantime, the opposition shouldn't cast aspersions on BJP President Amit Shah without concrete evidence. One final point, the Chief Justice has chosen not to appoint a single dissenting judge on the Loya case. But should he not recuse himself also? This is a case which has split the judiciary wide open. Only greater transparency and less speculation will restore public faith that judges are above political pressures. Latest that's happening in the film Padmavat, where Sanjay Leela Bansali's film, a few days ahead of release, remains uh, under pressure. Karni Sena and Akhil Bharatiya Kshatriya Mahasabha today filed a petition in the Supreme Court against the release of the film. The court will hear this plea tomorrow. The fringe group claims the film has been distorted history and demands a ban on it. Meanwhile, the Karni Sena, which has been running amok in some parts of the country with protests in Gujarat, in Rajasthan, in Haryana, now says it's ready to watch the film. I'm told its representatives will be watching the film tomorrow. And uh, even as we know that, the censor board chief, Prasoon Joshi, has been given Z-level security during his stay in Jaipur for the literary fest. Okay, while the noise is being made by the Karni Sena, there's another kind of noise which is more troubling that's taking place across the border. Incessant cross-border firing by Pakistani forces since Thursday in Kashmir has taken the death toll on our side to 12. A civilian from Akhnur sector of Jammu is the latest casualty of the continuous ceasefire violations by Pakistan. India Today's team has travelled to the LOC and the, and the international border for this ground report. Take a look.
This is how Pakistan has been targeting Indian villages along the border in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan continues to stoop to new low with unending savagery. For five days now, Pakistani guns have been pounding dozens of Indian villages on the international border in Jammu and Kashmir's Akhnur. On Sunday evening, the rogue nation rained fire on this little hamlet. More than a dozen uh, mortars were fired in this village. We can see uh, one of the mortars fell here and the splinters hit this wall. You can see uh, the marks of the splinters. Uh, unfortunately, two of the village residents, Ram Das and Gopal Das, were returning home when this uh, mortar uh, fell uh, in, in this lane of house. We can see uh, blood marks there. Their sleepers are also lying there. Uh, both the brothers, Ram Das and Gopal Das, were injured seriously. This is one family in the village that was hit hard due to incessant shelling. At that time, it was very bad. At that time, we had to make food. We had to eat food. Before we went to food, we went to the other side. We went to the other side. Then we went to the other side. A mortar fell in the family's courtyard. बहुत डर लग रहा है आठ बजे में इधर फेर हुई बहुत पूरे गांव को बड़ी खुजल खराबी हुई कोई बाहर जाने का टाइम नहीं मिला है मौका नहीं मिला बाहर निकलने का अब मकान थे अंदर बत्ती बांध हो गई Like Nikka Ram's family. Many other households are living in the shadow of terror. दुनिया घबरा गई थी, देने में भागने लगी, वो अपने मोर्चे में गए, जो मोर्चा बना हुआ है, वो पंचायत घर में, उधर देखा ताला लगा हुआ है, घबरा के उन्होंने ताला तोड़ा है, और फिर उसके अंदर घुसे हैं वो मोहल्ले वाले। Incessant cross-border firing by Pakistani forces. Since Thursday, in Kashmir, has taken the death toll on Indian side to 12, including seven civilians. Thousands of people have fled to safer areas. With Manjit Sehgal, Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, that ground report coming to you from Kashmir where clearly life is tough along the line of control. Up next though, a story from Kashmir that will lift the spirit. Our good news today story is also coming from the valley. It's the story of a Kashmiri bookshop that has found its way into the Limka Book of Records 2018. We'll tell you why when we return. to our good news today story and it comes once again this time from Jammu and Kashmir. Gulshan Books, a Kashmiri bookshop built on the Dal Lake has found its way into the Limka Book of Records 2018. The book got the recognition for its wide collection of as many as 80,000 books and a cafe where you can read for free. Let's take a look at a report that comes in from Kashmir where often there's only bad news but today the story is of a bookshop on a lake. Bookshop on a lake. Want to reach it? You have to take a boat. So the next time you're in Srinagar, take a Shikara ride to Gulshan Books. It has just made it to the Limka Book of Records as the only bookshop on a lake. ये बहुत बड़ी बात है हमारे लिए नहीं पूरे स्टेट के लिए बहुत अच्छी बात है ये कि और स्टेट के साथ साथ इंडिया के अंदर पहला बुकशॉप है ये जो लिम्का बुक ऑफ रिकॉर्ड में आया है। Gulshan is known for its huge collection of as many as 80,000 books and once you're there you can read to your heart's will. Actually किताब पढ़ने का माहौल जो है ये एक पीस जगह पे होना चाहिए इसमें डिस्टरबेंस नहीं होनी चाहिए जैसे आप यहाँ पे अभी बैठे हैं अब देखिए शोर कितना है बाहर गाड़ियों का शोर है गाड़ियों की हारन है कोई आता है जाता है तो डल में एक पीस माहौल है। The bookshop's focus is books on Kashmir and its literature. To attract book lovers to this unique shop, the owner even offers free shikara rides.
Literature lovers are now taking a boat in Kashmir to head to the only bookshop on a lake as mentioned in the Limka Book of Records. It has come as a significant appreciation for this bookshop which was set up in 2016 after floods. And in a region which is constantly marred with unrest, Gulshan Books, a renowned publication boasting of myriad collection, is taking one step at a time for book lovers here in Srinagar on the Dal. With Tari Klon, Pooja Shali for India Today. Always nice to have a good news story from the valley. And well, there's more good news coming up from the Himalayas because the ice skating rink in Shimla witnessed a mesmerizing torchlight display on Sunday night as skaters revived a century-old tradition in Shimla. All the lights of the rink were switched off as skaters held torchlights in their hands and performed at the event under the night sky. We leave you with these lovely images. Stay warm, stay well, think about our soldiers on the border. They don't have the warmth that you have in your homes. Bear a thought for them. Good night, goodbye. watching the video for more such news and updates please like share and subscribe to india today also check out our other great videos from our channel we know you would love to